Greetings in that strong and blessed name of Jesus. Praise our God. Welcome to Fully Alive. Fully Alive is an outreach ministry of the Church of God of Cleveland, located at 11100 Union Avenue in Cleveland, Ohio, right on the corner of MLK and Union. Well, praise our God. Uh, we are continuing our study in the Gospel of Luke, and we're in chapter 11. Hey, hey, hey. praise our God. Finally made it to chapter 11. All right. And uh, I want to talk to you uh, today, uh, focusing on Luke chapter 11, verses 1 through 13. Amen. I want to focus on prayer. Amen. Uh, with an emphasis on shameless, persistent, overcoming, prevailing prayer. Shameless, persistent prayer. Well, praise our God. Uh, again, uh, Luke um, chapter 11, our focus is going to be verses 1 through 13. Amen. Um, begin reading in verse 1 and 1 through 4. Okay. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, when you pray, say, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Praise our God. Amen. And so, uh, so our focus is the Lord's Prayer. And, and this prayer has been designated as the Lord's Prayer. And perhaps it should be called the Disciples' Prayer. Because after all, he was teaching them how to pray. Amen? Because in my opinion, uh, John chapter 17 is truly the Lord's Prayer. Amen? And so, uh, powerful prayer uh, in the upper room, uh, not too long before uh, his crucifixion, and uh, take your time and go back over that whole prayer. But just a few verses here. Uh, John 17, 9, I pray for them. Here's Jesus praying. I pray not for the world. Uh, I pray for them uh, which thou hast given me, for they are thine and all mine are thine, and thine are mine, and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more, verse 11, in the world. But these are in the world, and I come to thee, Holy Father, keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. I have given them thy word, verse 14, and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. And he continues his prayer. And in my opinion, in the opinion of others, amen, uh, as well as my mentor, uh, Brother Emerson Wilson, and that 
uh, John 17 should be more correctly referred as the Lord's Prayer. But nevertheless, amen. And so we see here in Luke uh, chapter 11 verses, uh, our focus right now is verses 1 through 4, amen. Uh, this prayer is very similar to, uh, again, the Lord's Prayer uh, in Matthew chapter 6 verses 9 to 13 because this is the popular version of the Lord's Prayer. He says in uh, verses 9 through 13, uh, after this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be in thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, and so uh, this prayer here in uh, Matthew uh, 6, 9 to 13, as well as in Luke uh, chapter 11, uh, 1 through 4, as I said, is the designated the Lord's Prayer. Amen. Now, they're very similar, but, you know, uh, not the same. It was not the same occasion. It wasn't the same place. It wasn't the same circumstances. And so, but yet, they are very similar. Amen. And saying the same thing practically okay so so again uh reading from uh uh albert barnes notes on the bible it says the following directions concerning prayer though they agree with those in matthew 6 9 yet we yet were delivered at another time in another place and upon another occasion, Christ was then in Galilee, now in Judea. He gave the former directions unasked for, these at the request of one of his disciples. The other were given as he was preaching. Amen. Well, nevertheless. <laughs> Thank God for his goodness. And so uh, it's interesting here in Matthew, not Matthew, but uh, Luke uh, chapter 11. Uh, it says, verse one, and it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. They saw a relationship in the prayer life of Jesus and the power that he operated in. They saw the high place that Jesus had placed on a life of prayer. They saw the quality time uh, in the prayer time, uh, how Jesus devoted quality time to prayer. They saw a relationship between this quality time that Jesus spent in prayer and the relationship between Jesus and his father. They wanted that relationship with Jehovah God. Uh, they wanted that kind of power and influence that they saw operating in the life of Jesus. And as they observed him, they knew that it was a, a relationship 
to prayer, to power, to that relationship with Father. Through observation, they knew uh, that they needed instruction on how to really pray and enter into God's presence. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Praise our God. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray like you pray. My God, teach us to uh, enter into the Father's presence. Uh, they watched him. They heard him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Praise our God. Uh, as, as he was praying, amen, yeah, Luke has taken notice of our Savior's praying often. And so, uh, in Luke 3.21, amen, it says, Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. Now, Jesus was being baptized, but he was also praying. And Luke pinpoints that. The heavens were open. Amen. So even as baptism, we see Jesus in prayer. And then in Luke, and of course it says, and the Holy Ghost descended in bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son in thee. I am well pleased. Well, praise our God. And I don't believe that you can get that kind of testimony from God if you're not developing your prayer life. Because a prayer life is synonymous with a intimate relationship with Jesus. Well, praise our God. I said Luke, amen, uh, has taken notice of our Savior's often pray. Luke 5, 16. I'm going to read verse 15 and 16. But so much the more, he was in the wilderness here, but so much the more went their fame abroad of him. And great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. Amen. And somebody says, if it had been me and my ministry were that, that, that effective, uh, you know, I would have been withdrawing myself in the wilderness uh, to pray so that I can keep a right attitude, so I can stay balanced, so I wouldn't be lifted up. <laughs> and also so that I can keep the power flowing, okay? Amen. Keep that intimate relationship. Amen. And then in Luke 6, 12, and this was before the appointment of the apostles, he continued all night in prayer, Luke 6, 12, and came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night. In prayer, my, my, my. Mm, mm, mm. Verse 13, and when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he chose 12, whom he also named apostles. And then here we look at Luke 19, 18, he was alone praying. Excuse me. Luke 9, 18, rather. And it came to pass as he was alone praying, his disciples were with him. And he asked them, saying, whom say the people that I am? <laughs> Amen. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, and you said, well, how can he be alone praying? Well, you know, even in the Garden of Gethsemane, he says, you guys 
hang out right here. Uh, and so he carried his three key disciples with him and then he parked them in a certain place and then he went a distance by himself. <laughs> Amen. And those three key disciples were supposed to watch, be alert. They were supposed to be in agreement and interceding on his behalf because they knew that this was a critical time. But the devil put them to sleep like he does so many of us when it comes down to prayer. Well, and then uh, again, Luke 9, 28. Uh, here it is, his transfiguration. Okay. And uh, this took place when Jesus went up on the mountain to pray. And so when we have a consistent habit of prayer, we never know when God's going to show up. Well, yes, that's the truth. Amen. And I've told you before that uh, when I lived in Alaska in our little chapel, it was four or five of us gathered around. Well, we were sitting singing praise uh, uh, you know, some people got a problem with singing uh, a chorus over and over, but we, we were singing, I love, I love you, Lord. You know, I lift my voice to worship you. Uh, that song, I love you, Lord. Anyway, uh, and so we were singing that chorus over and over. And as we sit there in that chapel, my wife playing and leading. And so uh, one by one, we felt impressed to go to the altar. So we were trickling to the altar. And as we began to seek God's face in prayer, as we began to, to pray, God ushered us in his presence. Poof! I, it never happened again. But I knew that I was in the throne room of God. And I'm asking, how did we get here, God? How you know? I didn't know what was the other guys were experiencing. I'm like, Lord, how did I get here? What did we do? You know? But I know that I was in his presence, okay? In the very throne room, it was an awesome experience. Now, I got to thinking about one young man. One young man was in that building and he was not saved. And I was wondering, what was he experiencing? But a few minutes, he was at the altar and God cleaned his clock, changed his life while he was down that altar. You know, so it was an awesome experience. But come to find out, we all had that experience. God ushered us into his presence. Oh, you never know what's going to happen as you begin to develop a prayer life. It's been consistent time before him. Amen. And so in Luke 9, 28 through 29, it says, and it came to pass about it. And eight days after these sayings, he took Peter and John and James and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, his fashion or the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment was white and glistering. So not only did his face change, but his clothes changed you know, as he entered into the presence of God and appeared, amen, to Elijah and, uh, I think, yeah, and Moses, I believe. Anyway, well, praise our God. Awesome. Anyway, and so, yeah, uh, uh, so Luke, amen, thank God for Luke, he uh, took notice of the Savior's uh, praying often. Amen. So they came and said, teach us to pray. And of course, Jesus says, uh, when you pray, he says, amen, this is what you say. And obviously, this was a pattern, and it's, and it's deeper than we're, we're trying to unfold here at all. I'm just touching on some things, but uh, we do know, uh, praise our God, he says, amen, uh, when you pray, he says, I want you to say, our Father, which art in heaven, amen, amen, and so the very fact that we can address him as Father, I mean that I have a relationship with him, he is my Father, I am his child, or his son. Amen. Now, everybody is not God's son. All right. All right. Some people are Satan's son because Jesus said you are your father, the devil. Ooh. <laughs> but uh, 
I know everybody wants to say, well, you know, God's my father. No, that's not true. That's not true. All right. But nevertheless, listen. So he says, teaching his disciples, they're to pray our father, which are in heaven. And I just like to say to you, if you're a believer, he's not only in heaven, he's in your heart. Amen. Now, I don't do I pray to the God in heaven, but I pray to the God who's in my heart. See, see, we have a hard time believing that God is in our heart. Oh, yeah. We, we say, come in our heart, Lord Jesus. And, and, and not only the, the Son comes in, but the Father comes in and the Holy Spirit. Ooh. And so, <laughs> Jesus, God, sits on the throne of my heart, controlling and propelling the universe. Because my body is the temple of God. God does not dwell in buildings made by hands, but he dwells in us. Ooh, well, listen. And so, I uh, teaching the pray. Okay, our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We serve a holy God. We serve a holy God. God is a holy God. And he requires a holy people. And that's why the Bible tells us that the plan that God had before he made the world, before, the, before he laid the foundation of the world, according to Ephesians chapter 1, amen, verses 1 through 6, amen, his plan in Christ was that we be holy and without blame before him in love. He's a holy God. He requires a holy people. And in Christ, uh, God forgives me of my sin. I become the righteousness of Jesus Christ, amen. Him who knew no sin became sin, that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. And, and God's righteousness give me the right to come into the presence of God without a sense of shame or, or guilt or unworthiness because the blood has cleansed me from all sin. He's a holy God. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Amen. To, uh, Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. His heart and his focus was the kingdom. He come to set up a kingdom. Amen. He is the king. And I like to say to you, when the king comes in, the kingdom comes in. And you must receive Jesus into your heart and life as king. You must give him the total rule of your life. Amen. When you come to a place where you want to give up the right to run your life independently of God and you surrender to his lordship, absolute surrender, the king comes in. The kingdom comes in. <laughs> well, praise our God. Hallelujah. Amen. Thy will be done. And when the king come in, when the kingdom comes in, his will will be done. Because your purpose in life is to obey him. Amen. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1, we were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his son. Amen. Well, praise our God. Amen. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so in earth. Amen. And for sure, in this earthen vessel. <laughs> Amen. Talked about your needs. Give us this day by day our daily bread. God wants to meet your needs. And that's why he says in Matthew 6, don't be worrying about what you can put on, what you're going to eat. Listen, if you seek first the kingdom of God, He'll make sure all these other things are added, okay? Let the king come in. Give up the right to run your life independently of God. Verse 4, and forgive us our sins as we forgive everyone who's indebted to us. Listen, amen. So if someone offends you, hurt you, amen, they become, amen, uh, you need to forgive them, okay? But if you hurt somebody else, you, you might be indebted to somebody, you know. You need to give folks who hurt you and harm you so that you can be forgiven amen, for hurting and harming other folks. You know, I, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I do know one thing. Our prayers, Lord, forgive us of our sin. Uncover in my life any sin, any area of my life that's not right with you. Let me see it. God can bring to your remembrance 
areas that you need to go get things right with people, sin you need to confess before him. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. And so you need to take care of it. For we also forgive everyone who's indebted to us. People who've harmed us. Not only am I asking you to forgive me, I forgive those who've harmed me. I'm not holding them accountable. Lord, that's your department. I release them. Okay? Well, praise God. And, uh, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. The Spirit of God does not lead you to sin. The Spirit of God does not lead you to temptation. Amen? The Spirit of God uncovers Satan's move. The Spirit of God shows you how the enemy is coming against you. The Spirit of God will help you stand. Amen? He's not going to lead you into temptation. Okay? But he's going to deliver you from evil. Praise God. What a powerful prayer that Jesus is teaching. And you can see what's in Jesus' heart. You can see that focus that Jesus had. Well, praise God. And of course, if it was, if it was Matthew 6, 9 through 13, uh, uh, we'll be saying, uh, we'll go on, we'll be saying, amen. Uh, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, praise our God. Yes, what a powerful and awesome prayer. Amen. What a powerful and awesome prayer. And then, and then, amen. Let me just read from the commentary. Uh, my time is running out again. I see this is going to have to be part two. But listen, uh, part two next week of uh, shameless, persistent, overcoming, prevailing prayer. Okay. Amen. Uh, the disciples, this is uh, Barnes, notes on the Bible. Uh, probably they had been struck with the excellency and the fervor of Jesus' prayer. And recollecting that John had taught his disciples to pray, they asked him also, teach us to pray. Uh, amen. And so we learn, therefore, that the gifts and graces of others should lead us to desire the same. Two, that the true method of praying can be learned only by our being properly taught. Indeed, we cannot pray acceptably at all unless God shall teach us how to pray. And three, that it is proper for us to meditate beforehand what we are to ask of God and arrange our thoughts that we may not come thoughtlessly into his presence. Amen. And that was Barnes' notes uh, on the Bible. Okay. And then uh, and Jesus continues on. As he teaches them, they said, teach us to pray. And now Jesus goes into teaching them a very important principle about prayer. The principle of shameless persistence in prayer. The principle of shameless overcoming per persistence, persevering prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, you know, uh, we don't have the time to talk about it, but uh, next week, shameless persistence overcoming prevailing prayer part two amen luke five and he said to them which of you and he goes on in and talk about the principle of persistence shameless overcoming prayer well praise our god pray 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 and ask god to teach you to pray. May the Lord bless you, smile on you, shed his countenance upon you, and give you peace. In the name of Jesus, amen.